Here we have a particle with a rough surface that is resting on a rough horizontal surface. A force P is being applied to the particle, but some force F is balancing this force. So the acceleration of the particle is zero. So let's see what's going on here. Let's look at the interface of the particle with the horizontal surface. If we could imagine magnifying this, um, the particle surface would look jagged. And the horizontal surface would look like this. Okay, it's a bit simplistic, but it's good enough for our purposes. So what's happening is that since a force P is being applied to the particle, the particle is pushing on the horizontal surface. So I will show the force on the horizontal surface due to the particle. We can write that as FSP. So I, I will use the letter S to refer to the horizontal surface and P to refer to the particle. But the surface of the particle is also rough. Um, okay, so that's the meaning of S F S P, and you can see it's in the direction to the right. The particle is pushing on the surface to the right. It's a horizontal force. Now, if the particle pushes on the surface, then by Newton's third law, the surface will push on the particle with a force of equal magnitude but opposite direction. So let's see the force on the particle due to the surface. So this is FPS, force on particle due to surface. And FPS, vector FPS is minus vector FSP. Equal magnitude but opposite directions. Now this FPS is actually this vector that I'm showing up here, I'm just calling it little f, and this force is called the force of friction on the particle. Well, FSP, this force here is also a friction force, but we are not interested in the force on the surface. We are interested in the force on the particle. So I'll just write F for that. Now, we can imagine the particle was initially at rest, and, um, you know, we start applying a force on it to the right. Now, the force could start off at zero. Then we could have a small force P acting to the right. We could uh, keep on increasing P. And still the particle doesn't move. We could increase it further. The particle remains at rest and so on. Now, what's happening to the friction force? Okay, I'll, I'll try and show this more carefully. I'll try and show both forces changing. Well, I'll try to show F changing as P increases. So, you can see that as P increases, F increases. But the magnitudes of both vectors are the same, obviously, while the particle is at rest, while its acceleration is zero. But obviously that's not going to keep going on forever. You know, if we increase P another bit, we're going to get to a stage where the particle is eventually going to move to the right. Okay, let's suppose that we are at the limit of increasing P. So if we increase P any further, the particle is just going to start to move. Um, the value of F when that occurs is called the limiting friction. Okay, so the particle is on the verge of moving. What if we keep on increasing P? Well, that's not going to make any difference to the limiting friction. So we could double P, make P much larger. F won't change. Of course, now the particle has started to move. The acceleration is no longer zero. So the particle is moving, to, is moving to the right. And the limiting friction won't change. Actually, it, it will decrease a little bit. But for our purposes, we will assume that the limiting friction remains constant. And what is the magnitude of the limiting friction? Well, that depends on... Um, well, it depends on the weight of the particle, actually. But it also, but more accurately, it depends on the force on the particle due to it being in contact with the surface.
that's the normal force, the force that's perpendicular to the surface of contact. So the maximum value that the limiting uh, that the friction force can have, the maximum value is also the limiting friction, is given by a constant mu which depends on the surfaces, how smooth or rough they are, the material that the surfaces are made of, and n, the magnitude of the normal force. So this is the maximum value that F can have. So um, the friction force runs from a minimum value of 0 up to a maximum value F max given by mu times n. Now, if the particle is on a horizontal surface, then n is equal to the weight of the particle, mg. See, the particle is not accelerating in the vertical direction. So the vertical components of all the forces on the particle must sum to zero. So the particle's weight is mg. P and F have no vertical components. Only these two forces have vertical components. So when we sum these four forces, we get a resultant force pointing to, that's either zero or pointing to the right. That has no vertical component. So these balance out. Of course, things are different if the particle is on an incline. So now the normal force is not mg. It's actually less than mg. And consequently, the maximum friction force is um, less than what it would have been if the surface was horizontal. The maximum friction force is mu times n, but n is less than mg in this situation. n would actually be given by mg times the cos of this angle here. Multiply mg by the cos of this angle. Um, so mu n is going to be less than what we get when the particle is on a horizontal surface. Okay, when the particle is on a horizontal surface, mu n is just mu times mg. So this is obviously going to be less than mu times mg. So the friction force depends on the slope of the surface, as well as mu, which is the material that the surfaces are made of, how rough or smooth the surfaces are. Okay, so now the particle is moving to the right. Um, the maximum friction force is acting. How do we get the acceleration? Well, we get the resultant force, which would be P minus F max, or P minus mu times N, or mu N is mu mg. I'll just write that down. And we divide by the mass. So that's just Newton's second law, F equals ma. Um, I'm taking directions to the right as being positive. So vectors pointing to the right are positive vectors. So P is positive. F max is negative. It's um, minus mu mg. These vectors add to give zero, so here's the resultant force on top, and we divide the resultant force by the mass. Okay, so the object accelerates to the right. Now let's consider the case where one surface is smooth. So that could either be the horizontal surface, or it could be the surface of the particle. So force P is applied to the particle. Now, if that's the case, there's no friction force. Okay, um, let's suppose that the horizontal surface is smooth. We imagine that the horizontal surface is perfectly smooth. This is some ideal situation, but the particle is rough. Now if we apply a force to the particle, no matter how small, the particle will accelerate to the right. Because you can see that, if we look at this closely, the particle is not digging into the horizontal surface. So it doesn't matter how small P is, the particle will accelerate to the right. Um, the resultant force will be P because forces N plus mg sum to zero. We have no acceleration in the vertical direction. So P will be equal to the mass of the particle times its acceleration. Now I just want to go back to this formula here for the magnitude of the limiting friction. Um, we saw that it depends on mu, so as the surfaces get rougher, mu increases.
Okay, mu is typically a value between zero and one. Although in certain situations, mu can actually be greater than one. Um, but for most examples we see, for probably all the examples that we will do, mu is a number between zero and one. And as the surfaces get rougher, mu goes up. And on the other hand, if the surfaces get smoother, mu goes down. Mu could be close to zero. Zero is the case where the surfaces are perfectly smooth. Or just one surface is smooth. We only need one surface to be perfectly smooth so that we can set mu equal to zero. Now I'll just give you a note on notation. I will use little f for the limiting friction, although sometimes I might write max there. But if no max is written, it means that we are talking about the limiting friction and the magnitude is mu times n. You see, the friction force runs from zero up to f max as we've seen already. Um, but if you just see little f without the max, just assume that we're talking about the maximum friction force acting. I'd still use big F for resultant force. So don't confuse the two. Little f is friction, big F is resultant force. So for example in this situation here, assuming that the maximum friction force is acting, big F is equal to vector P plus the friction force. Okay, this is our vector equation. Well, more completely, it's plus vector n, plus vector mg, the weight. But of course, these add up to, to zero. Now, in terms of magnitudes, if we take directions to the right as positive, um, b um, the magnitude of the resultant force is p minus the friction force f, where f is mu times n.